how it would be the law enforcement in our region. So having that said, I'll turn this over to Josh. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to talk just a little bit about MOC first and some of the capabilities of MOC. Um, what MOC stands for is Mobile Architecture for Communications Handling. It is an APL software, an automatic vehicle location software that the DOT is providing to law enforcement free of charge. The software itself is free. My services are free to law enforcement. I come out, train, install, make sure everything's working on it. Um, what it does, it does exactly what you see up here. You have a Google map with all these blue icons on it. Every one of those blue icons is some type of law enforcement vehicle that's out there right now. These icons update every 15 seconds. So it's, it's live. This is happening right now. Now, the green icon that you see up there is my icon. You show yourself on the map always as green. Um, some of the other icons you'll see up here, if I were to zoom in on the Des Moines and Polk County area, you'll also see some orange icons. Uh, we have some highway folks that are involved in, in the project. Uh, our highway helpers around the Des Moines metro area are involved. Uh, we do have a couple of Dallas County ambulances over here that are involved also, so we have some white icons. The software is also set up to include fire. We just don't have any fire agencies that are currently involved. Uh, we've only had this software for a total of three and a half months now, the production version. We've been testing and developing the software for over two years um, with some pilot agencies. And this is the, the result. Mock itself really is an officer safety tool. If an officer starts yelling for help, the dispatcher can look at the map and see where that officer's car is. Um, it could be that the officer walks into a convenience store and something happens in that convenience store and they start yelling for help. Dispatch can look to see where that person's at and send them help. Other officers in the field can look at their map and see where that officer is and start responding for help. Mock gives us an entire state view here, but I'm just going to zoom down on the Sac County area. You see my icon here. I can mouse over it. Dispatch can mouse over it. Other users out in the field can mouse over it. And they can see who I am. They can see that I'm unavailable in a meeting. And a note that I put in there also. Now those notes, those statuses are all set by the officers. If I wanted to make myself available, I could. My icon will change and it will now show that I'm available. But it will still show the substatus of meeting. If I wanted to change that to none, I could. It's still going to show my note. Now we do have some of these statuses set up on hotkeys so that if I were an officer and I wanted to go out there and I wanted to go out on a traffic stop. As I was making my traffic stop, I could hit the F2 key on my keyboard. It now shows me busy on a traffic stop. You can also change what type of transports that I'm operating in. If I was operating in an SUV, a four-wheel drive vehicle, an easy way for dispatch to look at the map, see who's driving an SUV in case they needed an SUV to make it to a call in the middle of a winter storm. For now, I'm listed as at the office, and I'm going to go back to status of no, no status at all. Well, these are all set, again, by the officers in the field, so that dispatch has a real quick visual reference to see what the deputies, where they're at, what they're doing, what their statuses are. So that again, if they were on that traffic stop, all they'd have to do is look at the map to see where they were on that traffic stop at. Mock is also an instant message program. I can pick any one of these users on that map and send them an instant message. Uh, useful for the high school parties that, you're, that your, your deputies would be responding to. And you don't want that dispatch of the officer to go out over the radio because you don't want to let everybody in scanner land know that your deputy is responding to the high school party. You just send the deputy or the deputies an instant message saying, hey, we've got a report of a party at this location. The deputies can respond without ever going out on the radio and letting everybody know what they were doing. It is also a chat room. We can open up chat rooms within the agency with anybody else that's out there. Uh, State Patrol Motor Vehicle Enforcement has this deployed statewide. Uh, other agencies that are in the process of deploying uh, Buena Vista County and your surrounding area, uh, Cherokee has shown interest, Ida County has shown interest. Um, so hopefully those, those two will also be coming on board. You can actually communicate between agencies without using the radio. You can send out, in a chat room, you can send out a picture of a suspect that you don't have any information on, send it out to a radius of 
say 50 miles, and say, does anybody have information or know who this person is? Somebody in Buena Vista County may come back and say, yeah, that's Joe Smith. And here's his information. Here's where he hangs out. So it's an information sharing tool. It is also an alert or broadcast tool, a dispatch tool, if you will. Uh, we could send out a missing per person alert as a dispatcher. We could do it based off of a recipient list. We could pick our people in a pick list and send this missing person alert out to everybody out there. We could also do it based off of a location. If I only wanted this alert to go out to a certain area, I could. If I wanted to pick only post four with the state patrol, this alert would only go out to post four in the state patrol. Anybody in that blue box would get this alert. If we wanted to pick a range, and let's say I only wanted to send this out to a 25 mile radius, we could do that and just send it out. Everybody in that circle would get this alert, <clears throat> part of the alert process or creation is the title of the alert. We could put missing person, put the person's name for the title, and then we could put in all the pertinent, pertinent information to that missing person. Uh, in the case of an Amber Alert, you could put in suspect vehicle information, you could put in uh, suspect information and all the missing person's information. We can also do attachments so that if you had a picture of the missing person, a picture of the suspect's car, you could send that out along with your alert so that everybody in the field had that picture right there on their laptops available to them <coughs> as they were looking for that missing person. And then the final, st final step in creating a session is the expiration of that session. Uh, we could keep the session active for uh, 24 hours, or we could have it expire at a specific time. Now that's important because remember that blue circle. If an officer were to come on duty in that blue circle while this session is still active, they would get that alert. If an officer was traveling across the state and they drove into that blue circle, they would then get that alert also. So it's, it's, that's kind of handy. And I'm going to cancel out of that because I definitely don't need to send out a missing person alert to everybody out there. Sure, I would get talked to. Um, there are different broadcasts out there. A supervisor could put a broadcast out to your cars, just uh, reminded them not to forget their timesheets. Just a quick, simple way to go through those screens and send a broadcast out and have it remain active to cover <clears throat> all of your oncoming ships. An easy way, again, to share information. The software also allows your deputies to access NCIC, or driver's license checks and registration checks. I can pull up a license check. Click Submit. And as an officer, know before I ever stop a car whether or not that car is stolen. It goes back to that officer safety tool. Before I walk up to the window of a car, before I have any contact with the driver, I know if there's something funky with that car. I could even run the registered owner and have the driver's license information in hand before I ever walked up to the car, before I ever even stopped the car. This sometimes runs a little slow, depends on how fast the internet's running, but eventually the vehicle information will come back. And there it is. So again, a good officer safety tool. I'm going to close out of this session. The rest of these buttons across here is just an easy way for the officers to modify the screen to their liking. Um, we have buddy lists, so that it, I can pick who I want to see in my buddy list. If I wanted to locate a particular user on the map, I could go down here. <coughs> I'm just going to go to post four because that's the post we're in. And I could right click on a user and locate that user on the map. This trooper looks like he's at the Denison Post, outside of Denison. That's where he's at. He is busy at the office on a phone hearing, um, I'm assuming on an OWI phone hearing. So again, an easy way to locate where your resources are. Now this comes into play <coughs> when there's a problem. This also comes into a play when there's a disaster. It's an easy way to sit in your emergency management, have a laptop with all your resources locations on it and be able to allocate those locations appropriately. Um, we've had some uh, some good stories come out of the software as far as resource allocation. 
um, we actually had, and this was during our pilot project, down here in Dallas County. Dallas County was part of our pilot group. They have this installed down in their dispatch in all their cars. They have a big screen TV up on the wall where they display the map much like this. They had a 911 call come in of a domestic abuse that was in process, in progress. Um, a young gentleman was out in the front yard actively choking his wife in the front yard. That was the 911 call. Their dispatch didn't waste a bunch of time. They looked at the map. They saw that their deputy that was out was on the opposite side of the county, quite a ways away. So they didn't have to burn a bunch of time trying to figure out where he was at. They just looked at the map. Also on the map, they did see another blue dot that was really close to where this call was. They moused over that blue dot <coughs> and they saw that it was a motor vehicle enforcement car. Now, motor vehicle enforcement cars are definitely not the first car dispatch normally thinks about calling to go to a call. Um, but this guy was available. They called him on the radio. They said, we need you to go to this call. He said, that's fine. I don't know where that address is. They gave him turn-by-turn -turn directions to the driveway of the house. He was there, and he was three miles away from the call when it came in. He was there in about a minute and a half from the time the time, so the, time the call came in, um, potentially saving a lot. So another use for the tool. Um, since we are using Google Maps, we do have the ability to switch over to a hybrid view or an aerial view. <coughs> Uh, when we first got this software, I pulled this up, was looking around the Des Moines area, <clears throat> and saw about 10 blue dots in this area right here. Got to looking around, zoomed in because I had the aerial, aerial view up, and realized, oh, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. That's um, what's the name of the restaurant right there. <laughs> Draw a blank. They're all at breakfast is what it was. Um, the machine shed. Yeah. The machine shed. That's, that's, it was the machine shed is, is where everybody was at. But it was a bunch of troopers that had just gotten done with the meeting, and, and that's where they were. So again, being able to tell where your resources are. This will be installed in dispatch and the cars so that they can communicate back and forth. We also have, since we again are using Google Maps, we have the ability to search for, say, restaurants. And if I spelled it right, it would probably work better. And there's the machine shed. So it allows you to put in an address or put in what you're looking for, and it'll bring up the nearest thing on the map so that we can find certain locations. Now, because it is Google Maps, if you were looking for an address, it's not always 100% accurate, but it gets you in the general area. That's a big time savings when you're when you're trying to get to a call in a hurry. You're trying to find where you're going. We we have the three D photometry mm -hmm. um, available to us. Is that uh, possible to incorporate into this or not? I got a call from the gentleman from the pictometry company last week. He was going to give me a call back this week. Um, something that we're definitely interested in looking into. Uh, we do have a lot of functionality that we are currently working on, enhancing the software from where from its beginnings. Uh, we would like to, number one, uh, interface it with 911 systems so that when a 911 <coughs> call comes in, we can plot that on the map. Uh, we want to add map layers. Uh, we can put a map layer of vulnerable terrorist targets. We can put a map layer out for the entire state that in a disaster, when law enforcement needs to respond to certain locations, we could provide that map layer out to them and say, hey, we need you to go to these, these targets or these locations. Um, editable map layers is another one that we're working on. Uh, in the case of a big snow event where you have multiple cars going in the ditch, multiple jurisdictions, state patrol, motor vehicle enforcement, the sheriff's office, PDs are out checking those cars. <coughs> As they're checking those vehicles, they can be putting a pinpoint on the map with the license plate number on the map as they're checking them. So that multiple agencies aren't checking the same car over and over and over and wasting a bunch of time. They roll up, say, oh, this one's already on the map, and continue on down the road. Somebody else has already checked it. So that's some of the functionality that we want to add in the near future. Um, other things that we have looked at is offline mapping. 
interfacing with other map systems. It's something that we're looking at. We just haven't gotten that far along in the development. How far out is it? It's a good question. Right now we are concentrating on those map layers, the different layers. Um, those are due out, we hope, mid next year. So it could be a couple of years out before we get to using other map files, GIS files. We're getting there. We're, we're definitely working towards something like that. Now, to have mock, number one, your agency has to be a tax agency and report a substantial amount of their crashes to the DOT via tracks. We're going to talk about tracks here in just a second. Your agency does that. Uh, the second thing is you have to have the laptops in the cars. You have to have the laptop so that you can run the software. You also have to have an internet connection. Uh, most agencies, in fact all the agencies that are currently on mock, are using cell cards in the cars. Um, so that is pretty much the only real recurring monthly fee is the cell card. Again, the software's free. The equipment's not free, of course. But that would be one-time fee and then you replace it every five, six years. You know, whatever you guys determine as a, a replacement <coughs> plan. So that's what makes an agency eligible for the mock software. Tracks itself is our main bread and butter. Why we do mock? is so that we can get more cooperation with tracks. We realize a good benefit when our crash data comes into us electronically. We have the ability to control that crash data, create an accident report, and force officers to validate that accident report so that we get good quality data coming in on our crash data. Tracks itself allows for crash reports, incident reports, citations, warning citations. Um, we have an interface with the, uh, the breath testing machine for OWIs. Um, tow reports, OWI reports, a whole gamut of different types of law enforcement reports. Now, one of the big realizations or benefits to law enforcement is number one, it gives them a nice, neat, typed out report that the county attorney can read. Better than hand handwritten stuff. Um, number two, it gives the ability to share information between reports. On some of these cases, an officer may do a crash report and then do an incident report and then do a couple citations, a couple warnings, um, <coughs> complaint affidavits. When they're done on some of these cases, they re-enter a person's information six, seven, eight, nine times. By the time they're done, they've got that person's information practically memorized. In the tracks world, you enter, you enter the information once, and then you share that information from report to report, saving time, making it more accurate. You don't have to enter it so many times that you're going to end up, sooner or later, making a miscalculation and putting in a wrong VIN number or a wrong social security number. You just enter it once, you're done. You use that over and over and over. And I'll show you that here just real quick. I've got a crash report that I'm going to open up. <coughs> If I had my barcode scanner with, I'd scan the information off the back of a driver's license. Since I don't have my barcode scanner with, I'm just going to real quick enter. A person's information. <clears throat> and then I can add a citation to this report. Got my crash report here in my citation. I now have that person's information in a pick list. All I have to do is pick it, move on, and it populates the fields for me. If I needed to enter multiple citations, I could hit a button. It'll make a copy of this citation, create another citation for me. All I have to do is put in the next violation. Again, time savings. Saving some time, making your reports more accurate. The other thing that capturing this data electronically does is it makes that data available for analysis. This is the crash reports that's currently in your tracks database here at the Sheriff's Office for now. All plotted back out onto a map so that you can see some of your bad areas or <coughs> crash areas where there's, a, where there's high incidence of crash. We can also do mapping of citations. We can do analysis of this data. We can filter out. I can open up a filter and say, I only want to see crash data for 2009. You had 127 crashes that were done in tracks in 2009. 
That's just by this office. That, that doesn't That's include just your office. And it does not include patrol. state patrol. Correct. That is only your office. It does not include state patrol, PDs, uh, motor vehicle enforcement, if they happen to do one. It doesn't include any of that. It's only your office because you're examining your database here at the sheriff's office. Um, from here, I could do charts. Say I wanted to do charts of what time of day were most of my crashes occurring. Most of them were occurring between 6 and 8 o'clock in the morning. So you can again use this data to make decisions on where you need to have people. Um, you can look at the map and say, okay, these crashes over here in the Odeboat area, what time of the day are they happening? They're happening right around lunchtime and about the time school gets out. So as the sheriff, you can say, okay, <coughs> I want somebody in Odeboat during school days between 2 and 3 to hopefully eliminate some of those crashes. Let people know that you're around. Make data, data decision, data driven decisions. Um, on the citation side, you can do pretty much the same thing. This is a good one for in your database, there's 207 citations. We have an agency, or I have an agency that I support right now that is going through this. They are being sued in federal court um, because they say that there's a couple officers that are violating people's rights by picking on them because of their race. They are able, because they use tracks, to go in here and bring up maps and charts and filters and prove that, hey, that's not the case which is pretty much the same with, with your agency. This is what their agency looks like. Um, they can provide that to the prosecutors and say, hey, it's not the case. Look, look at the data. And actually, I think they've had that dismissed now um, based off of the data that they've been collecting electronically, that historical data. That's what TRAX is, and the tool that goes mm -hmm. along with TRAX is IMAP. Um, that's kind of mock and TRAX in a nutshell um, to realize the greatest benefit is to, to be able to capture that data electronically on the roadside. Scan in registrations, scan in DLs with the, the, the equipment, the laptops and the cars. Um, 